This is a short video to visualize modulation, which is how you can take digital ones and zeros and send them over a wireless channel. The first thing you need to do is to take those numbers and to generate a waveform which represents those numbers. And that's what we can see here. We've had to pick an amount of time that we're going to dedicate to sending each one of those digits. We call that the symbol time. But you can't send this waveform over an antenna because an antenna oscillates at a particular frequency. And so we need to introduce the idea of a carrier waveform. So here we've got a sinusoidal signal at a frequency that our antenna is able to radiate. And what we're showing here is the most basic form of modulation called amplitude shift keying. So as you can see, when the digital data is a zero, we're going to be sending no signal at all. And when the digital data is one, we're going to be sending the carrier waveform. And we can see this and visualize this as multiplication of the top waveform with the carrier waveform. When you multiply those together, you get this signal here, and that would be able to be sent. Now, a good thing about this is it's very simple, this form, the amplitude shift keying, but a downside to it is at the receiver, you need to have an idea of this amplitude, and you don't know how far away you are from the transmitter and how much loss has happened in the channel, and so you're gonna to have to decide, was it really a waveform that was sent to you, or was it a silent period in order to detect it at the receiver. And so this is a challenge for amplitude shift keying. So let's think of another version of modulation. And this is what we call frequency shift keying. So in this case, we still have the same digital sequence. And now we've got two different carriers. And here I'm just showing examples of uh, carriers here where one is four times the other. And you can see here, in this case, when we're sending digital zero, we're sending one of the carriers. And when we're sending digital one, we send that by sending the other carrier. Now, an advantage of this modulation format is that it's a constant amplitude. So we don't have that challenge anymore to work out what the amplitude threshold should be. It's also fairly simple at the receiver to detect this modulation format, but you've really got to work out, was it one of the frequencies or was it the other? You need to discriminate between the frequencies. A challenge for this or a downside to this modulation format is that it can be wasteful of bandwidth because you're only using this frequency during this period of time and this other frequency during the other period of time, which means that you're always only ever using half of the bandwidth. And of course, bandwidth is very precious, so this can be wasteful. So let's think of another modulation format, and that's one that we call BPSK. Now in this case, the amplitude is constant, like it was for frequency shift keying, and the information is transmitted in the phase. It's easier to see that if I lower the carrier waveform here. And now we can see that when it's a digital zero, it's going to be sending the negative of the carrier. And that's the same thing here. And when it's a digital one, you're sending the carrier with the same phase as the carrier. So the positive aspects of this modulation format is that it's constant amplitude, like it was for frequency shift keying. Um, and you're using the bandwidth efficiently because you're only using a single carrier. A downside to it is that you need to be able to discriminate between the phases and to know exactly which phase it is, whether it was the positive phase or the negative one. So what that means is that at your receiver, you need to have a carrier wave being generated at your receiver, which matches the phase exactly to the phase of the transmitter. And this is often a challenging thing to do because of course they're not located at the same place, which is the whole point of the transmission. And you can easily see that if your phase of your receiver was to drift, let's say it drifted by half a wavelength, then it would mean that you would decode your signal exactly incorrectly. Because if this was going down here instead of going up because it had drifted by half a wavelength, then you would match it up with the wrong phase in your received data sequence. 
So this is a challenge for BPSK. So we can address that with DPSK. So this is differential phase shift key. Let's visualize that. Here again, we have the same carrier, the same data, but now the data is transmitted and encoded into the modulated waveform in terms of the difference from the previous phase. So now it's not the absolute phase, but the difference. So you can see here, every time there's a digital one, the phase changes. So we've gone from digital zero here and we had a certain phase. And when it goes up to a digital one, you do a phase change and that in your transmitted signal. And so here we've got that phase and then we got a zero again. So we don't change the phase. Then we've got a digital one. So we do change the phase here. Uh, again, you can see here where there's a sequence of ones in a row. They're going to change the phase, then change the phase, then change the phase. And that tells you at the receiver that it was a one and a one and a one. So now in this case for DPSK, clearly you don't need to know the absolute phase. You don't need to lock the receiver carrier to the transmitter carrier. You can simply see did the at the transition boundaries, you just determine did the phase change or not. If it did change, you realize that it was a one that was sent to you. If it did not change, then a zero was sent to you. Another thing you can do with phase shift keying is have multiple levels. So here we've only got zeros and ones. What that means is you get these spikes in your waveform. So this is can be seen as a downside to this binary modulation format where you're only sending zeros and ones. That's what binary means because you get these spikes happening very regularly. Every time there's a spike, what that means is there is a large expansion of the frequencies because these spikes contain high frequency components. So you might like to do, one thing you'd like to do is to smooth, either smooth out these spikes or make them happen less regularly. And one thing you can do for that is to have multiple different phase values. So this is one example, QPSK. In this case, there are four different phase values. So here you can see in the modulated waveform that it's not just the phase of the carrier or the opposite of that phase. Now you've got four different values. So here's one that starts here going down. Uh, this one here starts at that same value, but going up. And there's ones that start at this phase here and go up. And there's other ones that start at that same phase and go down. So here you can clearly see there are four phases in this waveform. And how do you match that to the data? Well, every two bits is now going to represent one of the four possible phases. And so here zero, zero matches to this one. Uh, then we've got one zero matches to this one. And you can see there's another one zero. So there's no phase transition here. It continues on because it was both one zero followed by one zero, but then we're followed by one one. So it's a different phase that corresponds to that. So having multiple different phases means that these spikes are now more spread out on average. Because they're spread out by a factor of two in the time domain, it means the bandwidth that you require is only half. So for QPSK, you require half the bandwidth of BPSK. So that's a benefit of that. The downside to that is that it's now harder to tell the difference between these phases at the receiver. Because BPSK only had two phases, zero and 180, and now QPSK has four phases. 0, 90, 180, and 270. And they are harder to determine at the receiver. Another thing you can do is to combine these formats. So if we combine the idea of phase shift keying with the idea of amplitude shift keying, then we get QAM. So in this case, you've got a combination of amplitude shift keying and phase shift keying. This is an example for eight QAM, which means there are eight different combinations of amplitudes and phases. And they are indexed by three bits because you have three bits, two to the power of three equals eight. So every three bits will tell you one of the combinations. So here is zero, zero, one is this combination of amplitude and phase. Uh, the zero, one, zero is a different combination of amplitude and phase and so on. So here you can see that you've got 
the advantages that we had before. You're now uh, having three bits come together, which means that these transitions happen only every three bits. So that's even more bandwidth efficient. Um, and you've got some usage of the amplitude dimension as well as the phase dimension. So this can spread out those um, differences between those phases and amplitudes to make it easier to detect at the receiver than if you had eight PSK, for example. So hopefully these waveforms and this way of visualizing them has given you more insights into modulation. If it has, give the video a like, it helps others to find the video. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the description below. You'll find a web page that has a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.